Hello and welcome. Welcome to First Principles of Cloud Native Technology. My name is Ron Petty and I work at RxM. RxM provides instructional consulting and advisory services in the cloud native space. Some of the things we've worked on included creation of the Kubernetes certifications, the CKAD, CKA, and the CKS. Prior to cloud native technologies, I worked in energy and finance, working on high performance computing systems. So why are we here? We're here to talk about uh, using first principles to understand cloud native systems. So to do that, we want to set up a scenario. And the scenario is, is you've inherited a system that you did not create. Um, more to the point, this system has some aspects of cloud native computing. So, you know, using Kubernetes in the cloud, um, and we'll kind of leave it at that for now. And so unless somebody provides you a lar large dearth of information and experience, it can be hard and challenging to understand uh, what the system is and what the system does. So here we have the dreaded, I've SSH'd into a machine and that's all I know, right? Is, is there something that we can do better to uh, more quickly come to an understanding what this uh, system does? Now, this talk isn't about judging. Uh, we shouldn't hate the code that came before. It's more of understanding what we have, how to find it, how to confirm it and try to fill in some holes in our knowledge. Now, this talk comes out of experience of teaching courses and consulting around this technology. And so uh, at this point, we've now taught thousands of people around the world of various skill levels. And there's been some pretty common trends and kind of the holes that need to be uh, filled. It will, it will vary per person. But the idea with this talk, hopefully in 20 or so minutes, will actually give you some um, ideas to think about how you can construct your own plan um, using first principles to help understand a system that you have inherited. So how might we you know, more tactically uh, start this process? Um, one way to do this, of course, is to set some goals. So as an engineer, uh, goals typically look like fixing bugs. Right. We want to do something here and now uh, it could be something a little more involved creation of a feature, assuming it's a little more complicated, not always, but can, but can be very often. We may go beyond that uh, more of a time commitment. Right. So maintaining. So that's a, a different level of activity. Right. That's uh, many features and many bugs. Right. So, again, we're talking about in generality, right, an entire, you know, call it a SaaS type um, system that you've deployed for your for your business. Then, of course, uh, once we know what we're doing and we're maintaining it, how do we improve upon that? Um, so again, we've got this system kind of day one. Um, we're being a little naive here. We're assuming that there's not much to go on. So what are some things we can kind of do uh, to, to have a better understanding, right? That's really the goal of this talk. So one approach is through first principles. Here we have a bunch of pithy quotes uh, explaining kind of what first principles are, or at least start to uh, talk about it. But we'll just start at the bottom. In general, re reassemble from the ground up and question assumptions. So for us, we've inherited the system. We want to know what the components are. Um, and, you know, it's how far back do you go, right? In a, in a perfect scenario, we go to some elemental level, um, but we don't have unlimited time. So we have to balance those kind of two competing uh, worldviews, one of full understanding versus getting to a point where we can start to build back our understanding of our overall system. So the idea here is to kind of lay out some of those areas to look and how they relate. And hopefully you can find the, a path that works for you. So a couple of terms, just so we're on the same page. Um, a system is a collection of things working together. For us, it's groups of processes, uh, whether we're building them or, or using some kind of hosted service. Uh, one that's lesser discussed is the, the users, so prevailing political or social order. So that's a system too. So there's a kind of a system on top of a system, right? We've, we've got this SaaS type uh, deployment and we have our internal users, Right, customer care, finance, the engineers, um, data analytics, right, all these kinds of efforts. Then you have your end users, right? It's it's not all engineers all the time. 
So while we're here filling in our mechanical knowledge, um, when we combine the components, we're going to need that uh, those other world views. So we're going to see that we're going to want to pick up, uh, you know, out of our chairs and go talk to these people and see if if what we think is the world is what they are actually participating in. So related to this system, this cloud native system of of ill definition that we've inherited, uh, there's cloud native development. You know, why are we using these tools? So just as a as a reminder, you know, speed the market. Um, you know, kind of that marketing level stuff that's, you know, good high level description. Uh, the Red Hat one here get a little more uh, meat on it. So um, responsive, scalable, fault tolerant apps anywhere in the public, private or hybrid clouds. So one thing to highlight here is very often we inherit these systems, you know, make it a little more concrete. We're assuming we're in some kind of, you know, public cloud, right? So now for any kind of substantial system, pieces of the system are things we wrote. Things are um, created by others, but we use them like a Kubernetes. And then there are services that we may use that are hosted, like a hosted database. And so the overall system has all these components. So how might we you know, start to understand why they're there? Uh, or even more simply, are, you know, what is there? How do we even find that? So the reality check happens. Right, so day one, you don't, you know, again, the scenario is, is we don't have much to go by. So what can we do? So if there is some existing documentation that can be good. So that's kind of this upper left um, quadrant here. And, you know, doesn't matter what the diagrams are. The point here is, is that there's two diagrams, right? If you look hard enough, you probably will find more than one piece of documentation and they can have some kind of confliction. Maybe it's a version one, version two, and it's nice and easy like that. Other times it's two different interpretations of the same thing. So it can be confusing, um, but we look for them anyway, right? It saves us some initial work. Bottom left, uh, there's issue tracking. You know, assuming we have a SaaS with many uh, disparate processes, we may have many uh, projects and many repositories. Uh, that may be true, but even with all of them, finding trends, which repos are busy, which ones have the most issues, what are the types of issues? You know, what are the issues now versus six months ago, right? Just spending an hour or two just kind of surfing through these things really can give you some context on what's going on. On the top right is a lesser known te uh, technique, which I think, you know, in the current reality of not knowing what's going on is a very good one, is look at a bill. Even just last month's bill, again, assuming we're in kind of a public cloud scenario, it'll have an itemized list of all the services we're using. It may not give us all the data flows. It may not tell us every process that's running on a VM, but it does let us know it even exists. Now, that doesn't mean we're actually using it, right? And, you know, worst case, this bill encompasses things that have nothing to do with our, our SaaS. Um, best case, it's our walled off production environment, and it these are things that are in it and nothing more, right? But that doesn't mean we're actually using them all, right? Now, this isn't critiquing, you know, is it good or bad, which it can highlight, you know, maybe a real expensive database or uh, unnecessary scaling, but that's not the point. You know, we're kind of in the scenario of we don't know what all this is about. So how can we kind of get a good quick view? A bill is a very good way um, to do that. Now, of course, you may have services in another cloud provider and you don't even know to ask for the bill. Right. So don't forget that kind of next step. You may have known the main part was in Amazon, but maybe you have parts in, in Google. Right. Talk to finance. Right. Talk to uh, a manager who who had been involved. Right. Just see if there's other parts. Right. We can get it. There's other ways to look at it. We can see network connections and things like that. But at a very high level, very easy, powerful way to do it. And then the bottom right is that shared context. So we, you know, again, we're, we're assuming we're relatively new to cloud native technology. Um, even the projects in the cloud native space are, are continually developing. So we, even though we're using particular technologies, um, there may be better, you know, white papers and, and scenarios with a, a related project than the project we're actually using. So once we know we're using something, we can go look for its document documentation, but that may not be enough. So maybe look at something in the same space to see how people are using it. Again, not the critique, not to replace. The idea is to get an understanding of what the power of these things are. Again, assuming we're newer to this uh, technology. So 
with this idea in mind, I talked to some engineering managers of some very large uh, scale systems you may know, including Twitter, uh, some of the original managers and, and other projects. And, you know, after interviewing people, I wanted to get their kind of ad hoc because I wanted that, you know, experiential, like, what would you want to do on day one, you know, without a ton of like preparation uh, to, to deal with this scenario, you know, you've inherited a system, a cloud native type systems more specifically, but, you know, they start off with just general systems. So the three questions that were asked were, how do you go about understanding the system you inherited? How do you know if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing? And how do you share that knowledge with others? So we'll, we'll go through a couple of, uh, of these um, managers feedback. So here's the first one. So uh, first goal, find out, you know, what it's, you know, what it's doing, what you just inherited is find out what it's supposed to be doing. Talk to users, you know, how do they use it? That's the very real world, right? It's what they're doing right now. Um, you'll learn about web portals that may not be documented, right? Some kind of web interface um, or maybe some kind of reporting engine mechanism behind, right? We'll start to see the entry points pretty quick. Um, there is the dream of what they want and, and what frustrates them, but, you know, don't do that on day one, right? That's, that's further down the road once you know what we got. Then, of course, there's the verification of these things. So um, at a lower level, if we have the, the related documentation for these components at an API level, the communication, that's great. Schemas on the database side tend to be a little easier. Uh, they have tools to show the schema, to generate the schema, right? APIs have them as well, but they're not as often deployed. So a combination of those things can give us a pretty decent view on how the conversation goes. Not necessarily who calls who, but what the, it may look like. Then, of course, the tool selection matters. If we see particular tools being used, uh, you know, if there's a queuing system in there, whether it's hosted or not, um, we, we can make some assumptions like, okay, there must be a need for a buffer or a retry queue, right? So we can kind of know, okay, maybe that's part of the system that performance really matters, right? Or maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe we queue it because we, we slowly work over something, right? But it gets us thinking in those, those terms. All right, now, next question. Is it doing what it's supposed to be doing? Um, mentions here acceptance text. So this is kind of the end user experience. Does, you know, the features I care about, is it doing that? Again, there's in the testing world, there's many terms, you know, we can slice and dice this, but if you're frantically learning a new system, having these acceptance tests is a great way. And if they don't exist, create them. Now, acceptance tests tend to focus more on like actual features that we want. Uh, a related idea is a categoriz categorization test. And that type of test is with this input, I get this output. I don't care if it's good or bad. That's just what it is, right? So it's good to consider doing a, a categorization test as well. That's a technique used very often in legacy systems because no one remembers how it was built, right? So in the cloud native world, if this is new to you, it doesn't hurt to go look at what was done in the past with legacy systems. Those techniques can also kind of help you learn these things. So it's another way to learn. Then finally, uh, the, you know, the measuring, right? So measure, you know, that's another one, is, is it doing what it's doing? So it's that ongoing metrics, right? We can't tell what a snapshot is it right or wrong. Uh, but we can look for consistency and behavior with metrics. And the bottom question, uh, how do you empower others? It's the sharing of that information, right? Don't, don't hide it. Engineers tend to, to, to measure and not necessarily share. It's not nefarious. It's just very often happens that way. Do consider sharing it because that also gives other eyes and other uh, conversations. All right, next engineer. Uh, slightly different view, but some overlap. So how do you learn a system you just inherited? Uh, here, it's a data flow analysis. Again, the protocols and messaging. Um, we're gonna see there's tools that help us with this. Then second, uh, graph, graphing that communication flow. So seeing the relations, right? So again, we'll see there's tools later that help us with this. Uh, next question, how do you know if the system is solving what it's supposed to be doing? Here, metrics matter. Once more, we wanna see those trends. A snapshot is, is too, to uh, you know, point in time, we need to see trends. Ultimately, we need to see those acceptance tests to prove it did what it did. But in you know, it's a system and presumably a lot of uh, activity. We want to start with the generalities and then start to dive into the details. Again, kind of the principle, uh, first principles approach. Okay, and then um, the bottom here. How do you empower others? Again, it's back to sharing. So you tell people what you see. You listen to what they say, and you try to, uh, as they say, bring to light the parts that are missing. So how do we go about understanding? Um, 
really what we want to just say here is you inherited the system, so you need to do some reflection. What about these technologies that you do see on the bill via talking? Do you know and what do you not know? All right, that gives us another opportunity to quickly figure out what we need to do, whether it's we're learning it or finding someone who knows that thing we don't know, right? We try to bring them in and fill in our holes in our knowledge. So again, that requires self-reflection. Very often, if you're just fighting bugs and doing it, you're, you're very myopic and just doing that. Again, you don't have a, a bigger plan. The idea is we've inherited the system and we're gonna maintain it for the long haul. So how do we, how can we start to do that? Another thing kind of echoed earlier, reflect against others share the information, see if when they tell it back to you, do you come to the same conclusions or not? You know, what does that mean? So think, you know, think about it uh, as a group, not just engineers, customer care, right? Uh, other managers, finance, right? Other groups, they will have their own tools and insights into these systems. Okay, now there's a continuum here from a technology point of view, so it's less esoteric and more into the tactical stuff. This continuum on the right-hand side, cloud is we generically is all the larger encompassing technology. R Kubernetes is our orchestrator, right? Running these pods. Pods are a collection of containers. Containers are one or more processes. So there's technologies at each of these levels. And for us in cloud native land, these you know this is kind of the spectrum. And so starting on the right, how do we start to drill through these? We've mentioned some concepts like accessing bills, accessing the hosted dashboards, right? For the VM, maybe, maybe again, those initial scenarios, maybe we deployed Kubernetes. Well, it's on a VM. That VM probably has performance metrics, right? It won't break it down necessarily to any particular process, but it gives us at least something to start with. Um, same thing with logs. If there's the ability to do log aggregation, take, it, take advantage of it. Um, if the system already exists, there's probably uh, IAM type controls, access controls. We can, you know, without knowing all the security settings, we can kind of see what is used to access and how many accounts there are, how often they change. We start to get a feel for, for how these things are all put together. If you kind of slide down past Kubernetes, we get into the pods and in the in lower level, into the individual machines, right? So very often in, in teaching of this technology, this is generally where people tend to be the weakest. Um, it's actually, ironically, distributed computing is a Big complicated subject, but it's the one that people can easily talk about because of you know horizontally scaling and things like that, uh, and collapsing of data, right? But knowing the individual lower level technologies is one of those harder areas. And so here, you know, can we start to gain knowledge? Well, if we can run a pod in in the production cluster, we can run it locally. If it fails because of dependencies, that tells us something, right? We don't necessarily have to had known there was dependencies, we can just experience it, right? But, uh, you know, a lot of people don't consider like just running the thing locally, right? It's, it can do that. Um, same thing with just an image, right? If there's multiple images in the pod, maybe we can run individual images, right? And then working back, we go all the way down to the kind of process level in the related technologies for sharing resources through namespaces and the security mechanisms those things provide. Just a brief example here, we're running a, um, uh, you know, a, a pod here with Nginx, and we tail the log. That's at a higher level, Kubernetes level. Then we jump all the way to the left, right? At the process level, we get we get the, the pit here. What can we do with it? Well, by knowing some of those left-handed, you know, continuum concepts, here we're showing that we can echo output into the output stream of your pod, right? You're, in this case, the Nginx container in that pod. And so again, when we go to tail, we see our message hyzer. Now, this isn't meant to be a cool, you know, it is a cool example, but it's not meant to be a compelling example, like this is something you should do. It's just meant to show like there's high level concepts and then there's low level concepts and they can meet as long as we know where to look. And so that's the, the holes we want to fill in. So what are the tools that are some tools that are available to do this? Again, on the right hand side, kind of cloud, we don't talk much about that because that's, you know, whatever the hosting provider provides, but there are things there to learn. In the middle, Kubernetes side, let's not forget Kubernetes itself has uh, ability to produce logs and metrics. And then there's things we can deploy to fill in some of those gaps. So say we have you know, basic metrics, but we don't have any way to analyze them or do anything fancy. 
that's where something like a Prometheus comes in, right? To aggregate all of our stats of our software, but that takes work, right? We may have to uh, open up ports and deploy code. There's some effort there. So let's not forget there's some built-in tools as well. And then of course, we can go down to the communication level, right? Between things, right? And that's where we have those service mesh tools like an Istio or Linkerd. On the left-hand side are things we don't necessarily have to install. And this is why we like to highlight them. So at the CLI level, the terminal level, the shell level, um, there's just things we need to know. We need to know like what does return codes mean um, inside of a shell context. Um, same thing at a process level. What does exec and forking at a high level do? What does signals do, right? Those are the methods of control. Um, how do we isolate and share resources, right? All those things. Then of course there's tools to manage that, right? The CRI, uh, you know, Docker and, and company. Um, there's the CNI plugin to help at the network level and, and the combination of these things. So what are their core technologies? How do they work? How do they log, right? Just because you know how to do Kubernetes log, don't forget we could potentially go on the node and look at the individual machine to help debug issues and understand things. Then of course there's the nodes themselves. We have a system D uh, as an init process system that comes into play in a lot of cases. Uh, Falco, Sysdig, uh, you know, any kernel level system call monitoring, that's a lower level tool that applies to any process. And so now we can see what's going on. I may not have any idea what your code does, but I can start inspecting it um, as it's actuating to see what it does. This isn't a comment on security. It's a comment more on just understanding what it's doing, um, good or bad. So there's some questions here. What's easiest? What's the most powerful? What is the easiest to share? Um, in my opinion, based on what I've seen in general, is the left-hand side, by knowing these lower level tools, we start to, you know, again, that's the first principles part, is break down these tools back to, you know, the components they're built on, right? Docker, some built on namespaces and, and resource control. Kubernetes is scheduling this across multiple machines. The cloud is, is moving even beyond that. And so it's the combination of all these things. But I think from a tactical point of view, back to the self-reflection, what on the left is, is missing? That usually will be one of the areas that will help you the most if you can start to fill it in. Are there other things? We've inherited a system. There's pipelines. That's another great view of the world. Um, and it's probably reality, right? If you push code and shows up in production, it is what it is. So studying those steps is a great way to start to see some critical features. Uh, but remember, it's not everything, right? Just because you had a pipeline doesn't mean it was all, everything was automated, right? There could be systems um, that are not. So try to fill in those gaps, right? Again, you're not going to do this overnight. So you want to, you know, take a very systematic approach at what you see and verify it, right? That's that's really the kind of game we're, we're playing here. Um, beyond that, there's security, there's optimization, right? There's all these things. That's, you know, the goal here isn't, um, you know, trying to give you advice on how to optimize things. The data you'll get from all this will help you do these other things, be more secure, be more optimal, get, get to those improvement phases, right? Not just maintenance phases, but even getting to a maintenance uh, mode if you're new to a system is difficult. And in the cloud native world, we have lots of tools to fill in um, these holes and metrics and, and controls, uh, but without kind of knowing what their pieces are individually, uh, that's a step a lot of people miss. They, they hear the high level terms and they just want to go for it. Um, but then they hand it off to someone and, you know, that can kind of leave a mess. So we're, what we're um, recommending is just take a risk adverse approach here and build up a plan, study these things over time, and they will continue to pay off uh, in the long run. And be sure to share this information, right? You don't need to say everything to everyone, but uh, get that reflection against other people. Okay, uh, for, for our more junior friends out there, here's some um, more specific things you can, can look at. And for the more senior who may have forgotten some of the, the, the lower level technologies, which um, can happen, um, again, on that left-hand side, here's some things to start uh, considering. Most of this is actually very tactical, like processes and user space and the proc file system, but some are more modeling, right? So OSI model, um, is a good one to reflect against. Um, doesn't mean we do it, but we reflect against it. Microservices, you know, why are we having these hosting platforms and containers and why is it stylized this way? 
uh, you know, it's easy to say in a conversation, but, you know, again, take that uh, next step and try to do a little bit of self-study to make sure you fill in the blank. Some of those tools we mentioned, Prometheus, service meshes, things like that, highlighted them here. Again, take advantage of that landscape, right? Go see what's out there. A lot of them have super great documentation. Again, we only have 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes here. So we, we, uh, we can't cover everything. So there are a lot of good stuff out there. So please take that next step and do some uh, fundamental research and again, take advantage of first principles here. A lot of cool technology and there's a lot to learn and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. All right, thank you for attending uh, my talk. I hope you have a great conference. If you have any questions about any of these things, uh, of course, teaching and consulting, but even if you just have a question, a technical question, um, uh, you know, a design question, if I can help you, I will. So. Um, please don't hesitate to, to contact me. Have a good day.